I remember telling my mom, between figuring out Stairway to Heaven and Back in Black, I told my mom, I was like, Mom, 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 I figured out what I want to do when I grow up. She's like, really, what is it? I said, I want to be a rock star. And she's like, okay, but you can't live at home. We had this band called, I think it was called The Lost Children or something tragic like that. We went to a church camp together and we'd sing songs and stuff like that. And so we'd take turns kind of helping to the guy that played guitar, play guitar. One day he shows me this picture, this band photo, and I'm not in it. And it's all dudes. And they'd kind of changed their look. They had like construction hard hats on and they're like all tough. And all of a sudden I realized oh, I'm not in their band anymore. That's weird. Okay, well, I can play just as good as all of those guys. I'm going to be better. It, it seemed like there was always a show happening. Back in that era, you had to kind of plan your evening because there might be a show at the off-ramp. You, you wanted to see the opening band at the off-ramp, but Rock Candy had the band in the middle slot that you wanted to see. And then if you were really, you know, if you could time it, then you could make it to another club for the headliner. and that. That definitely doesn't happen these days, where you, you have to choose what show you're going to see. It just doesn't happen. But there were so many bands playing and, and so many clubs. Pioneer Square was a great place for that too, because there were so many clubs and they had this joint cover. So you could just float around to all these different clubs and see people at the Central and the Color Box open later and um, the Swan. It, it was a good time, for sure. When I was working in American, I'd had the idea for House Bells. And it was just supposed to be this fun side project. And I met Om Jahari, who was our original, our, their original singer. I told her this idea for an all-female ACDC tribute band. And she's like, wow, okay. She's like, that's funny, because I was going to talk to you about an all-female punk band. And I was going to ask you if you wanted to join. But your idea is better, so let's, let's do that. And we started finding the, the role players to be the different people in ACDC that, you know, could handle it. So, Hell's Bells, we book our first show. It's about a month before the show, and, you know, like any good self-promoting musician, people say, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm doing this band called Hell's Bells. You know, it's an all-female all ACDC tribute band. They're like, that's you? I heard about you. And I was like, that's weird. We go out on stage, and it's packed. It is completely packed with people, rabid people, like we hit the first chord together, the, you know, the drummer counts us in, and it's all of a sudden like, what is happening? This is, this is crazy. It, it, and that feeling was duplicated in pretty much all the shows we played, like, it's like a little mini ACDC concert. There's still, I mean, it's, it's like, it's just the industry, there's not as many women. Um, but that, that seems like a conversation that happened in 1985. Why aren't there more women? Why, you know, why is it the same, you know, five, ten women that always come up in that conversation? That's not the case now. Like, we can play that tape over and over now, and, and part of it is maybe you're still a little bummed that there just weren't more women to, to be influenced by, but Jimmy Page was a huge influence on me. He's a guy. Um, David Gilmore was a huge influence on me. He's a guy. Nancy Wilson is a woman and she was a huge influence on me. So I, I took the influence where I needed to. But when I was in school, I read this magazine called Guitar. And they would have these polls where you could vote on like best metal guitar player, best blues guitar player, best um, whatever, like they had all these different genres, and, and whoever were the, the hot guitar players at the time um, were in those categories, and they, this was like 1989, 1990, they, they put out a poll, and one of, the, one of the categories was best female guitarist. So I was interested, I was like, whoa, okay. So they had like five names in the category. One was Bonnie Raitt, one was Vicki Peterson from the Bangles, I think one was Joan Jett, one was, I don't remember the woman's name, she was the, the guitarist in Vixen, because it was kind of hairband metal, they, Jan something, 
and then like maybe lead a Ford. So you've got five completely different guitar players lumped together in this category. They're trying. They're trying to, to go, okay, there are these female guitar players out here. Let's give them some credit. But they have nothing to do with each other other than their gender. And I, I remember writing the magazine letter. And I was like, first of all, thank you for noticing that there are women like me that read your magazine. I do find other women in bands inspiring. But you missed the mark. You lumped all these people together because they're women. Bonnie Raitt should be in the blues category. Jan from Vixen should be in the metal category. Joan Jett should be in the rock category. And they actually, they published my letter 